All right, I'm coming back early. All right, all right. Let's get Sam, Let's back, get in Sam back in here. All right, all right. So yeah, um, so yeah. Um, sorry if the sorry music's if weird. The music's weird. Uh, I'm trying out Monster Cat because it was included as part of the Humble Streamer Bundle. So I wanted. To, I haven't really played around with it that much yet. Uh, I didn't hate that song, but I didn't love it either. So you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Wasn't that bad? It wasn't great. No, I, no, exactly. Like, I was like, eh. But I actually do like some of the stuff I've heard on here so far. But I don't know. We'll see. The problem is, is I think the license is only for Twitch. So none of my Twitch VODs will be muted, but... <laughs> my uh my youtube ones probably will have to use some weird editing to make work yeah you don't want to get that um get like a copyright strike that stuff's bullshit uh yeah i don't have very many i think i have seven right now you have seven copyright strikes oh not copyright strikes uh they banned you way before that i thought you got like three <laughs> No, uh, because because of all the changes to the licensing rules, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> uh, okay. Because like, is they just monetize it, so they get the copyright stuff, and I don't, and that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely still happens. Uh, well, I don't know. It's more for gaming video and stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the stuff I have really falls under that, but I could be wrong. Well, it's fine. All you have to do is mirror everything and change the color tone <laughs> and have it play at 150 times the speed. 150 <laughs> percent, I mean, not 150 times. Yeah. I got you. That just seems like a lot more trouble than it's worth. You can you can actually pay for a, a YouTube license for Monster Cat. How much is that? Uh, the twenty month subscription. I don't know why it's twenty months. It's kind of odd, but the twenty month subscription is two hundred dollars US, I think. Oh well, they're just Mars based, I guess. That's like one Martian year. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is not crazy if you're gonna use it like regularly. Um, but. Oh, and, and the thing is, is uh, if you buy the twenty month one, it uh, yeah. See, that's what I thought. They'll do a lot more things. It's not really about strikes anymore. Because my account is in good standing, Sam. Don't worry. <laughs> good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, so you can get the license, and if you're gonna use it all the time, it's that's not crazy. I mean, if you're a professional streamer, that'd be a business expense and whatever else, right? So, and technically speaking, I got the one year Twitch one for like a dollar. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and like, so the thing is, is my YouTube channel is actually all Creative Commons. Um, proud. So I have everything under Creative Commons. I use a lot of the music that is on like, for example, the Twitch playlist on Spotify is um, Creative Commons. I don't play music during the main parts of my stream, so that's fine. It's not really an issue. Um, but yeah. So yeah, anyway, the, uh, they give you the option to remove audio uh, automatically using like, to remove audio so you can do that uh so i've done it and i have a very few uh videos that are actually uh have copyright claims on them right now mostly because it doesn't matter to me to remove them because having a little extra dead space in like the long like four hour vod of my stream <laughs> is fine because the, the the short cut ones don't have any music so it, it's not even an issue 
oh, right? Yeah, I guess because you exclude the brakes and everything. Yeah, exactly. So. Makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, that, that's that's fair, Brown. Um, yeah, and like the, the reason I don't listen, uh, Eric was I was talking about this with Erica last week. Remember, uh, the reason I don't play music on my stream is because I get too distracted. <laughs> I'm distracted enough. Oh yeah. You're, you're rambling rants, man. <laughs> like this one where I'm explaining how I get distracted and it's rambling and ranty. <laughs> one day I'm going to get that inception horn. <laughs> inception get, horn? Yeah. So you can get bounced up <laughs> through the layers of conversation back to the main conversation. That would be hilarious. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh man, speaking of singing and dancing, I saw the greatest and and I'm not going to lie, I because I've started using Twitter, I actually have been reading it, but I saw the greatest tweet of a gif uh, from Hamilton of Thomas uh, Thomas Jefferson doing his ridiculous dance. David Diggs is Thomas Jefferson. And it was about the, uh, the American health care bill that got canned. Uh, and it was just the quote, you know, you're going to need congressional approval, but you ain't got the votes. And it was spectacular. <laughs> just the, that guy in that musical is so smug, and it was perfect. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, it was great. It was Sam Regal from Critical Role. Yeah. All right. I, I see that, yeah. Okay. I, I think it got taken down because I can't see it anymore. I don't know why. How much it does it hurt you to know that you just told a story about something you read on Twitter? I know, it's disgusting. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> but it was a good tweet. The one and only good tweet. <laughs> Aside from mine, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Oh man, Twitter is monstrous. It's... It requires way too much curation. I don't understand it. Yeah, that's fair. It did. It did. It did tell me that Jeff Lemire was doing a signing in Guelph, so I could get my brother to to get me an autographed copy of Royal City Number One. Oh, well, that's something. <laughs> Guess it's not all garbage. Just mostly. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah, but this this uh, the guy who tweeted it, Sam Regal. I mean, like that's his whole thing. And that wasn't my first experience. That was just the first thing I saw and loved. <sighs> my first experience was like following a bunch of people and then realizing that they just post something like every five minutes and having to unfollow most of them because I don't care. Yeah, I I wish there was like uh like there are some things I really like. Like I follow a bunch of like comic book companies and like stuff like that. And there there are days when I'm like they're they're retweeting cool stuff that I'm actually interested in, and then there are other days where they're just promoting a bunch of stuff and I'm just like, uh, I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> no, it was like hot memes, no. I don't need that. <laughs> hot memes. Yeah, your memes are dank enough. Yeah, the dankest. God, are there a list? Oh, never mind. Never. I'm not going into this. Twitter, no. So uh, the prompt for this flash fiction piece is uh, your main character should be superstitious and an employee at a fast food restaurant. Uh, and the plot is a box of kittens and lonely. Hmm. So what's the restaurant? Uh, McDonald's. What? No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, f five guys. 
Uh, what's the burger place from uh, Pulp Fiction? I don't even know. <laughs> it's like uh, Big Kahuna Burger. Yeah. Big Kahuna Burger. Yeah, yeah. it should be Big Kahuna Burger. It's a tasty. I'm not burger. gonna actually. I'm not actually gonna put the name of the place in the in the story. <laughs> Sorry. I'm already a quarter of the way through. I've only written two sentences. Wait, did I specify that earlier? I'm doing a Drabble, so I'm doing exactly 100 words. Because I like challenging myself. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no is right. Oh no. But five superstitious guys lonely with a box of kittens. <laughs> Well, yeah, and obviously they're going to be black kittens, right? Because black cats and superstition. Yes. I don't know. And so all these, the, the character has to lie flat on their back so that the cats can't cross his path. Because if he were facing any given direction, they would be, like, going there. I, I guess... I, I totally didn't see your message about Discord, by the way, <laughs> till now. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Couldn't you have any other cat to avoid superstition? Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. It depends what you want to do with the story. Because, see, the way I look at it, um, if it's a box of black kittens, like black cats, uh, and he takes them home, regardless of his superstitious values, then isn't he trying to grow in the face of these an poor animals versus, uh, like, isn't that a little bit more of a character development? than just picking up a box of cats. I don't know. I'm not a pet person, so I apologize if I seem very cavalier about this, but I'm not, so I, I, I don't know. What if the box of kittens is, like, blocking his way, and so he's got to figure out how to get around it? Yeah, gotta, that's totally... He's got to fight his terror of black cats. But how do we, how do we demonstrate his loneliness? Or are the cats lonely? I don't understand. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm stumped. I don't know, man. You're stumped. Well, good thing you're not logged, because that would be bad. Oh damn! Yeah, that'd be a hundred times worse. <laughs> Especially, I have a whole crate of like wood on my deck right now. Like any one of those could be haunted, and I wouldn't know it. Exactly. You would never know. Because you just want to get past the cats to escape his job and find people? Yeah, I can see it. And I, and I, and like, that's kind of my point though, Proud, is like, if he was very superstitious and he did the black cat thing anyway, then like that's kind of a sign of his own personal growth like he's he's navigating past his impulses in a way which i kind of like as well as uh you know if you just copy and paste some of these sentences you're writing to me you'd actually have a flat fishing story <laughs> just saying <laughs> True, but like twenty five percent of it would be usernames. <laughs> You're only left with like seventy five words. Uh, just for that, one of the next ones I'm gonna do is gonna be entirely user, uh, like username conversations. <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Like an IM chat story. It'll be great. <laughs> is that too meta? 
like I'll be posting in an IM chat a story that's being told through a IM chat of a story being told. That's not sufficiently meta. You need one more layer. <laughs> one more layer. Um, yeah, a dream what, a dream. If, what if this? What if the story being told, both in this level and another level, is uh, real? My real life, like part of my real life, like something I actually experienced. Yes, there. Do that. Cause I, I I'm just saying like this is this can happen we can do this let's do it then yeah we will I'm gonna finish this cat story though because <laughs> that's the last words because because that's the last thing I want is to leave yet another thing unfinished <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you're right <laughs> that would be bad to be honest it's it's not too bad just the two short stories and fear the siren mostly. And technically speaking, I finished like two full issues, so it's not like I've left a half an issue or something. But, you know, it depends. Ah. I don't want I don't want this to be I anymore. Uh chat, I need like a name, a character name. What do you think? Just throw something out there. Oh, it's all good, Brad. It's all good. No worries, buddy. You make about as much sense as I do. So, you know. What that says about you or about me, who knows. So what are you working on, Sam? You're working on um, working the photo on prompt? Yeah, exactly. And and you know what? You're trying to troll me with sassy pants, but I'm totally going to use that. Uh, just not in English. So deal with it. <laughs> uh, if you like sa sassy pants as a character name, Proud, you'd love uh, the old ruins character names. They're kind of fantastic. I think Sam would agree. He came up with most of them. Yeah, uh, I think they're all amazing. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, so um, turns out pants in Icelandic is Buxor, or spelled like that anyway. Guess what? That's the character name now. Nice. Character names 101. If you want them to mean something, just change them into another language. So it's not so it's so it's not so obvious. Oh man, I read I read a story or a book um, where all the character names or half the character names were named after parts of swords, and the other half of the characters were named after like medieval warfare technology, like 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 armor and um one of them was i can't remember what the dang name, <coughs> word was but it was it it's the things that they used before we had k-rails and it was it was a big wicker basket filled with dirt and rocks that was that they'd make 
like fortifications out of impromptu fortifications and it, the whole okay. thing was so cool because it kind of informed who the character was a little bit like whether they were aggressive or defensive or, or whatever that's really odd yeah it was great what uh what book was that that was terminal world by alistair reynolds oh of course that actually makes perfect sense yeah he's super good at character games well he's just that kind of guy right like he just he's he invests time into getting those cool patterns and stuff oh absolutely i'm trying to find some of them i can't Oh, yeah, like the, the main character's name was Keon or Quillen, depending on how you properly want to pronounce it, which is the cross guard for a sword. Yep. Uh, one of the guys was named Ricasso, which is another different part. Um, oh, man, what's the guy? Anyway, it, it was really neat. <laughs> well, you know, that's what happens when you're you're in a dark alley in the middle of the night and strange sounds happen. Why am I so jumpy? I don't even know what you're talking about. I named another character after you. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I was slow that trail. <laughs> Cause I'm lazy and that's what I do. I just name after people in the chat. <laughs> I'm the worst at names, let's be honest. This is what I think anytime I'm walking anywhere. Don't get mugged, don't get mugged, don't get mugged. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, how loud is my typing? It's probably pretty loud, right? Uh, it's a little loud, it's not awful. Um, I was going to say, did I ever tell you a story about, uh, that guy, uh, when I was coming home after, uh, hanging out with Robin downtown? No. Did some guy follow you? No. Uh, so I was leaving, uh, the hotel. My friend Robin was in town for a conference, uh, and she was staying at a hotel downtown. So I met up with her just to hang out, uh, have drinks and stuff. And, uh, I was leaving the hotel, like to come home that night. So like it was probably, I don't know, midnight ish. Um, and, uh, I leave the hotel and I'm getting in my Uber and a guy stops me and he's like, you stole my jacket. <laughs> Did you steal his jacket? Uh, <laughs> I was like, no man, I didn't. And he's like, I have that exact jacket at home. You stole my jacket. Oh, good. You got you got confronted by a homeless man. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, was, it was. So I was like, uh, I, like I don't even know. Like I was like, man, I can assure you, I didn't do it. He's like, you stole my jacket, and <laughs> I was like, uh, what do I say? Like, obviously, if I just keep denying it, he's just gonna keep going. Yeah. So I was like, I'm sorry. And he was like, it's okay, I forgive you. Just don't let it happen again. And walked away. Oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, what just happened? Holy crap. Whatever that guy was on, I want some. It's, it's such a unique situation, though. Like, uh, I remember I showed you that video of, like, Neil Gaiman telling the, uh, the Scary Pants story, right? Where yeah. he, like, he's hanging out with Alan Moore and, like, 
Alan Moore's talking about from hell and it's it's all terrible and gruesome and he has to go get some air and he sits down on the curb and that gypsy lady shows up and starts telling him her life story. Like that's that's kind of the feeling I get from this. Like it's just like, oh like I wonder I wonder what this was all about. What if he was right? <laughs> well, that's why I asked, right? Like did you mug this man earlier? <laughs> You just don't remember because you've been drinking? No. The jacket I was wearing was uh, a jacket my father gave me, like, years ago. Like, years and years ago. Do you think he stole it? My father? Yeah. I really doubt it. Uh, I guess you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I'll never know. You need to find this guy, this definitely crazy homeless guy, <laughs> and ask him. Do you look like that? <laughs> no. He didn't. He actually looked very normal and very clean. I don't, like... I don't think he was homeless, to be honest. Well, the guy was off his meds, it sounds like. Yeah, well, that's kind of the impression I got, was that, um... Because, like, he didn't go into the hotel. Like, he, he avoided the hotel entirely. Yeah, so, like, I got, I got the impression that, like, he just kind of wanders the streets sometimes. Could be. Or, yeah, I mean... You don't have to look crazy to be crazy. Yeah, and just because you're crazy doesn't necessarily mean you, you, you don't live somewhere, either. No, I'm just saying, like, there's a strong link between homelessness yeah. and mental illness. That is fair. That's what the statistics show us. <laughs> You're not wrong, Proud. You're not wrong. <laughs> I think being eccentric is, is a good thing, though, personally. Like, I don't know. Yeah, we I don't have, have... I wouldn't have aspirations to be normal. I don't have aspirations to be normal. I don't know. We but have, yeah, you're. We wouldn't have anything from Christopher Walken if we didn't have eccentric people. So think about yep. a, think about a world without Christopher Walken. What uh, a nightmare hellscape that would be. It would be. That'd be terrible. Um. We wouldn't have that that uh the Library of Human History. Yeah, and then what would we even do? Do you know? Or sorry, not the Library of Human History, the Library of Human uh, Imagination. Have you seen this? I don't think so. I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't think I've seen it. You've probably heard me talk about it. So, the Library of Human Imagination is a uh, personal library of a guy by the name of Jay Walker. I think it's Jay Walker. I know his last name is Walker. I just don't remember his first name. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh boy. It is the literal coolest library. Uh, no, it's the second coolest library I've ever seen. I think Willy Wonka lives here. But it's just like, it's got all these really cool holographic glass. This might also and... be in Hogwarts. Oh, there's a Sputnik in there. A Sputnik. Yeah, he has one of the I Sputnik, Sputnik prototypes. I'm yeah. <laughs> but he's a rich eccentric billionaire, so he can afford to do this thing. But Jesus, This is amazing. It's super cool, right? Where's mine? Why can't I have this? Where I just business? want this to. Be, I just want my office to be like this. God, you could just walk into this place any day and like have some cool idea by looking in any direction. Yeah. So like. Oh, spooky glass walkways. It it like totally floats under the radar, proud. Like it's it 
<clears throat> it's because it's a personal library and not like a public library. So, you know, I believe you can, I believe you can go in there. Um, like, I think you can get a tour of it, but, uh, you gotta, you gotta like book it and stuff. Cause if I'm not mistaken, I think it's on someone's property. That's like really famous. I'm totally wrong. It's not open to the public and it's not in anyone famous. <laughs> Way to be a hundred percent wrong. It happens. It happens. He has an instruction manual for NASA's Saturn V rocket. God, how many stories tall is that? Dunno. A working Nazi Enigma device? Oh shit, that'd be awesome. Uh, a an 1890 Edison sound recording and playback device that plays wax cylinders. Oh, Complete skeleton of a juvenile raptor dinosaur. About the size of a large house cat, 45 million years old. Oh, I thought you meant it was just like kind of rude and immature. <laughs> a page from the original Gutenberg Bible. The original? The like, original. You'd have to keep that in like some perfect humidity and temperature and pressure controlled container because it'd be dust otherwise oh yeah totally i just want that sick ass globe he has goatsy's 1828 faust with illustrations by delacroix uh, with carved that's, letter that's binding definitely not pronounced goatsy that's a totally different thing <laughs> i know it's uh it's I, <laughs> yeah first edition ex <laughs> i wasn't a sure first you were going with that with the original goatsy a first edition encyclopedia britannica 1768 <laughs> oh my god it, there's a video tour it's all in the thing whatever man i don't have time to look up real sources who hates on wikipedia <laughs> that's just Look, here's the official thing. I'm sure there's stuff in here that... Wait, you Proud, see. are you a university professor? Because all of them hate Wikipedia. <laughs> Everyone else I know loves it. Here we go. An original 1957 Russian Sputnik. One of two known anas uh, anastatic facsimiles of the original 1776 Declaration of Independence. Made directly from the original using a wet copy process. Oh, you can add whatever you want to Wikipedia, but then a hundred thousand angry nerds will go and fix it. Yeah, Wikipedia, Wikipedia guys take their take their stuff seriously. <laughs> uh, so the second cool, uh, so yeah, I said this was the second coolest library, right? Yeah, you said it was the second coolest. Yeah, because the first coolest is this library in Mexico. Um, that has a full whale skeleton in it, hanging from the roof. Uh huh. As you do. As you do, because you got to do it. It's called the uh, Biblioteca Vasconcelos. I'm better at Spanish than German. Apparently, you put some effort into that one. <laughs> The go to library, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this uh, that's some cool art that's been taken in there, but this is what it looks like. It's like this whole thing. Um, that's the whale skeleton there. Uh, this looks like something out of like this looks like a board cube. Yeah, it's really cool. And then uh, if you go to their website, where are you? It's uh, it's got a full. Uh, <laughs> what do you use this? Uh, it's got a full uh, like uh, ecosystem on top of it. It's got like like uh, oh, like, like a, a whole. Big... Whoop! Like a garden. Sorry. Yeah, like a whole, um, yeah, 
trying to think of a good way to say it. Oh, come on. Their webpage is in Spanish? Their webpage is in Spanish. <laughs> How unbelievably unacceptable for a Mexican library. I've been on this website before. Um. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. This is what I was looking for. Yeah, wouldn't that wouldn't that library be like the best set for some Black Mirror episode? Yeah. Oh, totally. Um. But yeah, they've got like this whole like. Uh, like whole set of gardens and everything outside of it and like greenhouses and all kinds of stuff and it's really it's really cool <laughs> it's really cool i know a lot about weird libraries because i was writing a, a book or a uh i'm not sure what it is it might be a tv show now i'm not i don't remember uh i was writing a thing that took place in a library and i spent like at least a week researching cool libraries libraries are pretty great yeah I mean, like, where else can you just walk in and be like i want a book it's gonna be somewhere in this huge building and now i've got to find it and it's like a journey like a quest to find that book even if you if you've got the reference number you still gotta find out where the hell that is yeah i mean that quote from neil gaiman always floats around all the time of like google will return uh a thousand answers a librarian will return you the right one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sort of. Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying, but it's like it's that kind of thing of like library, like r real librarians know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, sure, but you can you can ask some pretty weird things. Google's a great internet librarian. It's just dealing with so much more. Yeah. Also, no, that's it's not a human. <laughs> also, it's not a human. Yes, that is true. I'm pulling up my research doc for you guys so you can see uh, so you guys can see some of the cool libraries I was looking at. Uh, where are you? <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't do that, Brown. That will end badly. Um, so, like, this is the library at Yale, where it's got like this. It's a giant cube, and it's got like a a book stack thing in the middle that's also a giant cube. And then all these uh, areas on the outside are like uh, like s study rooms and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like um, a macro version of one of those. Um those preservation chambers they have in the uh, papal library they're like they're okay like, like a glass cube with just all sorts of ancient ass books in them and it kind of looks like that yeah um and it actually sits on stone risers in the corners <laughs> like the whole building does oh, so it's the whole really thing is cool. floating oh man yeah it's really cool uh, then we got, yeah, the Biblioteca Vasconcelos, uh, which I already showed you guys. This place is awesome. Um, the Boston Public Library, of course, very, very old. Got all kinds of really cool art in it. Um, yeah, they've, they've got, like, so, such cool statues in there. Um, But then they modernized a bunch of it so like you got these like cool like really modern sections that are all cool colors and things did a lot of research the seattle public library central branch is really cool they've got um uh, all kinds of glass work and like really ridiculous escalators and stuff um yeah i 
Anyway, there's a lot of really cool things. Japan has some really cool libraries too. Um, but they're only cool because they're all really small and stuff. Like they're, uh, they're all designed in really different ways. There's a couple of really cool ones in Japan that are like um, outside. Like they have like trees growing through them and stuff. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, so I, I believe that you were writing something at some point. Oh yeah, I was. Hey, I closed it, okay? I'm on it. Not getting distracted. I've been worse. I've been distracted worse. <laughs> or more distracted. Yeah, it sounds really ridiculous, but it, it's it's kind of a really cool concept. Though, I mean, the books are protected. They're not, like, going to get destroyed or anything. So it's not like if it rains, they're screwed. Or... <laughs> it's just different, you know? But, I mean, there are those things. Like, they're not just shelves sitting outside, but, like, tiny miniature libraries. Some communities have got, like... Those kind of boxes, it looks like a giant birdhouse. And people, like, when they're finished reading a book, will just put it in there so anyone else can walk by and grab it and read it and return it or not. Yeah, um, I've seen that. Uh, like, a sort of a leave, leave one, take one. Yeah. I've seen in some places that do that kind of thing. Absolutely. That's why I have, um, that's why I have that really old school, uh, Pulp Fiction book from the guy who wrote Battlefield Earth. Oh, from um, oh my God, what is that guy's name? L. The Ron Scientology Hubbard. guy. L. Ron yeah, Hubbard. I have an old school L. Ron Hubbard Pulp Fiction book from one of those, from a take one leave one. Yeah, in my old uh, apartment building, the front like foyer, we kind of had a spot that was that, and people would leave. Like sometimes it was baby clothes, or sometimes it was books, or. You know, like whatever, like an old crock pot that you don't want anymore, it, and people would it, it moved like stuff was rarely there for more than a day or two. Yeah, that makes sense. I got a um, <clears throat> I got a couple books from that. Um, oh man, what the hell? The guy who hosted Cosmos, I got one of his books. I can't remember this idiot's name. What is wrong with me? The guy who was the Cosmos, you mean... No, not, um, not, not the new one, the original one. Oh. Um, so not Neil deGrasse Tyson, no. the alien guy. Uh, Carl Sagan. Yeah, Carl Sagan. I don't, can't believe I can't remember Carl Sagan's name. Um, yeah, I got a Carl Sagan book from, from that, and it was great. Oh yeah? You think you're a raptor? Prove it. <laughs> oh, I got, uh... I bought that streaming Humble Bundle this morning, so I now have Face Rig. Oh, so I can literally yes. make myself a raptor. <laughs> face Rig is amazing. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I think my face is just... I don't know. I was trying to... It's hard to configure, is kind of the thing. Uh, I've definitely seen streams where the person started using face rig would say a thing, then see their own face, like the rigged face doing something and laugh so hard that it would bug out the face. <laughs> like it just in this infinite downward spiral of, of like an incontrollable laughing fit. Because yeah. <laughs> as they laughed, it would get even buggier and then like it, <laughs> they'd laugh more and it would bug out more and it was, they had to stop the stream after I think two or three minutes. It was fantastic. <laughs> nice. Uh, we're doing good games. Thanks, man. Uh, what was I going to say? You, you don't think that's pronounced game sat had? Game sat had? Yeah, not games. Uh, games at had? Maybe, maybe games a thad? Games a thad? I can see games a thad. Games. Uh, so, so the cool libraries that we're, that, uh, yeah, we we're talking about cool libraries. Um, 
that one at Deepin Bunker. That's like literally made out of that that like warehouse hangar. <laughs> yeah, that was. Did we see the library there? We drove past it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, we didn't actually go in that. I thought you meant one that was in the bunker itself. No. Yeah, there wasn't a library in the like, bunker itself. I swear itself. I would have noticed that. Okay, Mr. Games. Oh, I'm in 62 words. We're getting there. I reached for my switchblade, presumably, is what you're going to write here. Uh, you have a switchblade? No, I wish I did, though. I need a kitten species. Kitten species? You mean like breed? Yes, that's what I mean. Because uh, I was going to say cat. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it, they're, it's a Maine Coon. How about that? They're huge. And their name seems sounds vaguely racist. Vaguely? Yeah. Panther. Ooh, what about a Manx cat? I was thinking more like a calico or something. Well, that's boring. Yeah. Or what about um, like an ocelot? Maybe it's an ocelot. An, an ocelot? Yeah, they're like a they're like the thing that house cats got bred from. I am not putting any Metal Gear Solid references in. God damn it. I was trying so hard to get it in there. <laughs> I spent too much time with you, Sam. I know I know all of the things about Metal Gear Solid. No, <laughs> Um, there are 22 cat breeds that come with solid black coats. Apparently, ragamuffin is a, gre a breed of cat. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not impressed that apparently all the answers were wrong, and he already had an idea of what the answer he wanted. This is bullshit. <laughs> this, uh, this, <laughs> this is what I do. I'm sorry. Or I'm going to ask you something, and then any answer you give is probably wrong because you didn't read my mind. <laughs> I did that to Proud last night, too. I was asking him about uh, what I wanted to, this thing I wanted to do in uh, the project proposals. And I was like, thanks, Proud. You totally inspired me because you answered my question correctly, but my question was wrong. <laughs> That's even worse. 
But hey, I came to the right conclusions because of it, so technically it was the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. That wouldn't even surprise me. That's a great cat name. Uh, uh, again, from Critical Role, Matt Mercer and Marisha Ray's uh, bird is named Dagon. <laughs> That's funny. So when they do like periscopes, it's just like, oh, should I get Dagon out? No, Dagon, stop eating those crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Things you don't normally hear. That's amazing. Well, I mean, Carly's cats were called Thor and Loki. Oh, that's amazing too. Oh no, sorry, that's not that's not Carly's cats. That's David Horseman's cats. No, <laughs> really? Yeah, they're Thor and Loki. Because <laughs> so they're two brothers. <laughs> Ugh, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Man, why would you do that? You can never call your dog in public. Yeah, I just told that story, Proud. Come on, man. Actually, uh, Sam, what's yeah. uh, what's what's the stream delay right like right now? Can you just pop that open? I'm I'm looking at the stream. It's not long. It's like maybe ten seconds. If you if you hit the if you hit the um the little gear and hit video stats, it'll tell you. I don't have a video stats option. Are you on mobile? No. Weird. Uh, oh, I'm clicking the wrong gear. Uh, yeah, it's 11 seconds. That's not bad. Yeah, and I was. They like, um, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been talking about it, a lot about it um. Recently, uh. But I think when they did uh the new overlay, like the new homepage and all that, like they they dropped everything from like 20 seconds to like 10 or eight. I've actually been on a few streams lately that have been at six, six seconds. That's really yeah. Good. Six seconds. That's it's like, insane. Well, they're, they're clearly trying to compete with Hitbox Cause I know for a fact that it's stealing people out from under them. Cause it has like one or two second stream delay. Uh, I think their main competitor right now is beam. Whatever. Oh no. I, I know how much you love Hitbox. I'm just saying, I think Beam is the one I think they're trying to compete with. Does it have super low stream delay as well? I think so. Well, either way, they like they were Twitch was far and away the worst for that. Yeah. Like almost a minute at some points. Yeah. Which is lame because like how do you interact with your audience if you have that kind of delay? Yeah. When that's kind of the whole draw is that you can kind of have a conversation with the streamer. Yep. No, you're you're totally correct. Totally, totally correct. Yeah. Um, they up the bit rate sources too, eh? So you can actually use higher bit rates, or partners can anyway. I'm not sure about everybody. But that's good stuff because, like, the more they do those kinds of things, the the more options they give people for bit rates and all that, where they like the uh, the streamer doesn't have to worry about it so much. Because I did, I did for a long time there when I first started streaming, where like if I streamed above twenty five hundred or so, which is kind of where I'm at right now, uh, certain some of my friends wouldn't be able to watch because it would lag out. And let's be honest, I'm probably streaming at a higher bit rate than I really need to, but Yeah. I know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for quality. Well, you got that half right. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It it's good though cuz um
that's fair that's fair proud though uh hanging out with erica is really cool because she's super on top of chat <laughs> and it's basically like you're having like you're having like a slightly slow conversation <laughs> yeah it totally depends on the streamer a lot of them at least yeah. a lot of the ones that i follow are like they're there for the chat interaction as much as just to broadcast whatever they're doing Stifled. There's a good word. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Hey, Mikel, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in ages. I mean, I think we spoke two weeks ago, but that was the first time in like months. <laughs> um, what's going on, man? Yeah, that actually makes total sense, Proud. But I like I personally think that the reason it's happening now is because of those uh, those changes they made to the to the front page. I think it's just using up less server space and stuff. So like the faster and like the less server space and signal that they have to send out for all that stuff. The better the the less load they'll have, the better the delay can be. Yada yada yada. Yeah, multitasking is hard. I can believe it. Actually, I should move the chat. I should have had the chat in a different place the whole time. <laughs> It's on my second screen. I gotta look all the way over to the other side and face away from the mic. Yeah, totally, Mikel. That's that's awesome, dude. I'm glad things are going good for you. silent for a long period because I keep muting my mic intermittently so my keyboard doesn't just overwhelm the stream. Uh, you could put to push to talk on. I could do that. Set it to a key that is not in a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. I set mine to my Z key when I use this push to talk. I wonder if I can assign it to one of my function, but like not I have like those macro keys that you've got. I wonder if I can put it on one of those. Like yeah, a, that might work. A non-letter key. Oh, yeah, that's because he stopped. Uh, that's because he stopped uh, broadcasting it. Proud. It was pretty bad before. At least I thought it was pretty bad. I don't know. My keyboard is super clicky. Oh, that's totally true. You can set it to til tilde. Oh, that makes sense. That's a good. That's a good call. Where is the button? Where is the option? All right, so I'm at a hundred and six words. You better fix that. That's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Okay, good. So, gotta... so now I Sorry, what? Is it is it working, Sam? Cuz I can't hear you. Yeah, so the problem is that because I'm in a text editor, I'm writing in uh, Scrivener that now I just have a massive line of tilts. Oh yeah, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> I'll just have like Zs everywhere. Good, I gotta, I gotta change. Oh god damn it! I can remove the back door here.
Okay, yeah, I got it. If I just do this. Yeah, so uh, push to talk, not really working for me. Uh, you could set it to mute though. So like, uh, instead of having to like do weird things, if you just hit the button, it, it'll mute it in discord. It'll mute your mic and then you can just pop it back on. Uh, huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Remove some folded cardboard. So wait, how do I do that? If I'm mm. going to set it to push to mute, where's that? Uh, that's also in the, in the options. Because I'm looking at the voice options. I don't see a... So if you, um, if you go into keybinds. Oh, I can, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, you can hear me now? Yep. You should not be able to hear me now? No, we still hear you. Oh, that means I gotta hold it down to stay muted, not toggle. Oh, uh, yeah, the toggle is underneath that. Okay, I fixed it. Yeah, it's working now. Is it? No, it's all it's all good. Pro yeah, it was. If you were talking just then, I heard I heard the I heard the mute I heard the background noise cut off, so I assumed it was working. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. No, I, it is actually working now. That's good. Uh, I don't disagree, Proud. I'm just like, the problem is, is then um. Underneath folded cardboard is not specific enough, in my opinion. Also, not that that's that dirt face is totally me right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a cute dinosaur dirt, dirt face. Um, I'm thinking I just remove one of these, don't get mugs. Well, you gotta get either mugged. have only one or you need to have three. Oh, like of the statement yeah like it's the rule of threes right like i don't play by the rule of threes oh my god i know i'm a savage next you're gonna be telling me you don't believe in the rule of thirds no the rule of thirds is totally a thing this is just outrageous <laughs> See, this sentence here is completely unnecessary. So now I have five words I need to write. <laughs> you could also say I think this is the same, or actually more words, but don't get mugged, he repeated over and over again. Uh, I don't have words for that now. <laughs> the cat sat on the mat. Well, that's a hundred there. So I'm gonna post this in chat, uh, and then I'm gonna take a five minute break uh, so I can go to the bathroom, uh, and because it's two fifteen. And uh, yeah. You guys can tell me if there's stuff I need to edit. You just get your text dumping straight to the chat. Yeah, I'm just texting straight. To the well, it's only a hundred words. It's fine. 
not bad at all actually cool all right so uh yeah we're, we're gonna go to a break 